English out. Um, so yeah, so I'd like to talk about this project um, we're doing at the moment. Um, and we're coming to the end of the DRC project. So, uh, so now it's time to develop some kind of visionary ideas. Uh, so these are all the people <laughs> that have been involved over the years. And uh, I just want to like to thank you, thank, thank them for all their kind of input and ideas that they put in the project. And um, so the project is really kind of um, uh, about conflicts uh, between um, initially with biodiversity and, um, and food security, but it's kind of grown a bit out of this in terms of like um, really looking at the, uh, the sustainable development goals. And we, we look at conflicts in a way that we uh, define them as where parties have like strongly held opinions and they clash over their objectives. And these kind of conflicts uh, are really now damaging to sustainability, biodiversity, it's a range of sustainable development goals. And as we all know, um, we have a very disappointing track record of decision-making, uh, negotiations, and uh, resolving conflicts. So it, I'm not gonna go back into all the theory, but we all know uh, the tragedy of the commons and um, as a, as a um, um, further development, the Ostrom's uh, social ecological ideas and the governing of the commons. So my question in a way is a little bit, while this simple math is very compelling and really interesting and loads of people have caught on to this and have done very very simple model we actually have to move on to more complex social ecological systems that take into account all this diversity of, of actors and stakeholders as we've already heard today so how do we engage a lot of people worldwide in conservation in these kind of systems and and the transformation of these systems well, one option um, I would like to propose today is to um, engage um, the world of playing games. So 2.7 billion people uh, play regular, uh, play games regularly. And I mean, that is weekly, um, play these games. Minecraft has 600 million players. Uh, Animal Crossing, only 60 million units uh, sold. Uh, playing for the planet, a new UN-wide, um, UN-led um, uh, initiative, has uh, 80 studios combined, the biggest studios at the moment, 1 billion players um, play these games that are combined in these 80 studios. So I think we can say, maybe not everyone, but roughly a third of the human population worldwide loves playing games. So oh, how do we um, how do we take this on board? Well, um, we could say, well, if we have a if we have an agent based model that we um, that we are talking about today, um, often a, a, a landscape uh, game, uh, or sorry, a landscape model where we have let's say wildlife and we have the wildlife um, is uh, destroying farms, then uh, what we could do we could actually stop such a model where. Um, sorry, the, the, the agents are the, the, um, the farmers that could kill and pull wildlife. And we have another agent, maybe that is a manager or a policymaker that wants to balance these kind of things out. So what we could actually do, we could think of it as a model. Let's say the resource model. We've got animals in the landscape. We've got the landscape. We have uh, monitoring. Uh, we give indicators to a manager. And the manager um, passes these uh, policies and costs and benefits, uh, let's say, onto a user. The user makes then uh, decisions. All this can be easily, nicely optimized by a genetic algorithm. And we can learn. And we can that way develop the model further. This is what we've done. But then what we said, what if we actually change one of the of the um, models with a player. And this is exactly what we've done. So we have now this uh, kind of shiny app where you can go in and uh, you can set the cost of a hunting license and then press go and see how many, um, uh, how many um, animals a farmer would, would hunt and, and based on these costs, because a farmer of course has a limited, a limited budget. And when the hunting cost, hunting license costs are really high, the farmer would uh, then not be able to shoot so many birds. But if you think that you get too little yield from your farm on your landscape but, and so many animals, you could set these costs of the hunting license uh, lower again. 
and that would allow more farmers to hunt. And then what we can do is actually we can collect these decisions that people make. So rather than letting the genetic algorithm run, we let uh, people um, run through the games. And we've done this a little bit. And you can see here how people, for example, make decisions when we change the land ownership or we um, allow more or fewer farmers in, in, the, in the game. And we can see how that affects the outcome, but also how people adjust their decisions at the lower uh, left. And that we can use um, to um, maybe one day, we haven't done it yet, create more realistic player strategies that Tim was talking about um, that uh, are much more kind of based on the actual decisions people make in these games. And they are based on um, uh, or allow for a much higher diversity. So this is all quite um, academic. And you would say, well, Neil, sorry, but like, how are you going to get a, million pe a billion people to play this? I mean, we, well, we have not even hit 100 yet. Right? OK, fair enough. A colleague of mine um, and together we um, have this new project and we thought of a real game, like a mobile phone game. And you can um, go to Google Play or App Store and play it for free. So again, it's a game of trade-offs between sustainable development goals. Um, you can construct a dam. You can generate power in, in the way that you um, reinvest in the dam, but you can also um, invest in your biodiversity, in your landscape, or your community. So it's a real question of trade-offs. What do you actually favor, and how do you get the most of this out of this landscape? So now let's look a bit better. Um, in the two weeks during COP26, we launched this games. And we have 200, uh, over 700 play sessions um, with uh, over 64,000 decisions made by these people. That's quite considerable, I think. Um, so interesting, when you look at the, at the data that we have uh, started to analyze, um, lots of people actually um, have decided to go for the big dam that they do set, um, floods a lot of the landscape, creates a lot of damage, but if you see the combination of medium and small, uh, small dams is quite a bit higher. So there's a quite a, a considered choice. Whereas if you look at the investment that people have made back into biodiversity versus the community or the dam, then you see quite um, extreme decisions. So we've already learned now that people coming to COP26 um, made quite extreme decisions um, favoring uh, biodiversity. So the next step would be to play it with a different type of community and see whether these kind of extreme um, decisions uh, play out any further. But if you see here, like um, when, when we look at like 65% um, uh, of the decisions um, um, towards biodiversity, for example, was made by 40% of these players. So that's a quite a huge amount of um, decisions where people again and again just invested in biodiversity rather than in any of the others. So COP26 um, uh, people were very clearly uh, interested in biodiversity rather than the communities or the energy. So what have we learned so far from this is, um, well, I mean, a game is in a way, every game has to have a model underlying. It's not possible without, you have to have a model. But a model can also be a game as soon as you get people to interact with it. It's in a way a game. So maybe that is, um, sorry for the pun, a game changer in terms of how we sell our models. Uh, the role of games, I think, is a little bit underused in terms of parameterizing models. We are looking, and we've heard this a lot from Tim, like he's looking for um, <laughs> ways to parameterize his models better, bring diversity to it. I think the role of games is a um, possibility. And I think we need to engage more people in our research and in our models. And I have tried this over years. I've tried on a very small level, Nature Scott, Scottish government. It's bloody hard. When you put this and frame it as a shiny app, if you put it into a game, it, then people are starting to think, mm, this is actually also fun, not only work. So how do we engage a billion people? Um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but um, this is maybe one way of uh, looking at it. Thank you.